So you want to use WordPress to build your website, but you aren't sure where to start. Well, in this series, I'm gonna show you exactly how to build a WordPress website from start to finish with a free theme and free plugins. You'll learn how to sign up for web hosting, how to connect your custom domain, how to build pages with Cadence and the Blocks Editor, and how to fully customize your site's header, footer, and branding. I'll also show you how to do SEO, what plugins to use to secure and optimize your website, and how to maintain your website long-term. This series is completely free to watch, and that's all thanks to Hostinger. Normally, I would have to charge for a course like this with the amount of time that went into creating it. I've spent weeks researching, planning, and producing this course, and Hostinger was kind enough to sponsor it so you can watch it for free. So I want to give a huge thanks to Hostinger for supporting the channel. I've had a vision of creating a course like this for a while, and I wanted it to be free for you. Hostinger made that possible, so be sure to support them for your web hosting needs. And speaking of web hosting, the first step to building your WordPress website is to sign up for web hosting. Hostinger has several plans, so I'm going to navigate to hostinger.com slash Krayler Academy and take a look at each plan. The business plan is what I'd recommend for most people. It has what I look for in hosting like automatic daily backups, staging environments, a CDN, and WordPress AI tools. If you're on a tight budget, you could start with the premium plan and upgrade to the business plan down the road, but I think the business plan is worth the extra few bucks for the added features and increased performance. And if you're building a site that you know will have a lot of traffic, you could go for the cloud startup plan. This plan is specifically for sites that need top-notch performance, maybe a WooCommerce store or a membership plugin or something highly dynamic in WordPress that needs that extra power. Now, all of Hostinger's plans are managed, so they'll take care of WordPress updates, backups, and website security. They also offer 24-7 multilingual support so they can help out whenever you have any questions. I'm going to add the business plan to my cart, and if you use my link at hostinger.com slash Krayler Academy, you should see that my promo code is automatically applied, which is going to give you the best price. If you don't, make sure to enter promo code Krayler Academy at checkout. Now, I would recommend purchasing at least a 12-month account to start, because the price per month is exponentially lower than a month-to-month -month account, and you also get a free domain for the first year. If you want the lowest price per month and the lowest renewal rate, you'll want to go for the 48 month option. I'm just going to put in my payment info and I'll let you do the same and then I'll submit the payment. After that, you'll be directed to the setup page that says hello and it's going to ask you a couple questions about your site. So I'm creating the site for myself, next. No, this is not my first time creating a website, but maybe it is for you so you can answer yes if you'd like. I'm going to click next. What type of website do you want to build? Uh, I'm going to say online business card, just some sort of landing page for people to go to. I'll click next. Since we're using WordPress, I'm just going to proceed with WordPress with AI. And now we need to set an email and password for the WordPress dashboard. Make sure you store this password securely in a password manager and use best practices like a randomly generated password because this goes a long way to protecting your WordPress site. This is the login that you use to get into the admin dashboard and make changes. So you want to be absolutely sure that you have a strong password. We'll talk more about securing your website later in the series, but having a strong password really is the number one thing you can do to protect your website. Next, we can select our theme, and we're going to be using the Cadence theme in this course. It's awesome that Hostinger lets us install it right off the bat, so we're not going to have to worry about adding this later in the WordPress dashboard. Now, we are given the option to pre-install some recommended plugins, but I'm going to cover the plugins I personally would recommend later in the series, so I'm just going to skip this screen. We have the option of generating some blog posts using Hostinger's AI Assistant by giving it a little bit of context around the name of your brand and a description of what you do. Once again, since I want to keep things as simple as possible, I'm going to skip this step, but you always have the option to take advantage of the Hostinger AI Assistant to generate some SEO-friendly blog posts down the road. Now, it's time to connect a domain name. Since I chose a 48-month account, I'm going to claim my free domain for the first year, but if you already have an existing domain, you can type it here, or if you want to get started with a temporary domain, you can select it right here. I'm going to claim my free domain, so I think I'll just go with KrailerTutorial.com, and right here, it's free for the first year, and I'll click Next. 
If you do claim the free domain, it's going to ask you a few questions about your contact information to proceed with the registration. And if you're connecting an external domain that you already own, Hostinger will give you the name servers to point your domain to later in the setup process. Now it's going to ask you to select a server location, and you want to pick one that's closest to the majority of your audience. For me, that's the United States, so I'm going to select the US location, which is in Arizona, and then I'll click next. Now it's finalizing the setup and installing WordPress. This step may take a few minutes, so now is a great time to hit that subscribe button. It's free to subscribe and click the bell and you'll be the first to know when I release new videos. Once the setup is complete, you're taken to the hosting or dashboard and we can click this admin panel button to get started learning WordPress. Before we get started with the Cadence theme, I want to first cover the fundamentals of how WordPress works. For those of you who are using WordPress for the first time, this part of the video is going to be really helpful to understand the architecture of WordPress and some of the basic terms you need to know. If you've used WordPress before and want to dive right into using Cadence, you can skip to episode 2. It'll be live on the channel on March 29th, or if you're watching this before then, the entire course is free to watch at Crayler.academy, so go to the link below to see all the episodes. So this is the WordPress admin dashboard. You can get back here at any time by going to yourdomain.com wp-admin. When you log into the WordPress backend, you're typically going to be sent to this dashboard page. Here you can see there's some widgets with useful information, and you can customize the screen, move the widgets around, and control which information you're able to see here. Everything in the WordPress dashboard can be accessed through the sidebar on the left, and under each main option, you're going to see other menu options that appear under it. So we've got pages, and under pages, all pages, and add new page, and the entire WordPress dashboard works off of this menu system. I wanted you to see these options and settings first before we get to work and install more plugins because as you're going to see later in the series, installing plugins typically adds additional menu options and I think it's helpful to understand which features are built into WordPress before you go installing a bunch of plugins. That way you understand what WordPress itself is able to do and what third-party plugins can bring to the table. So these are the core features of WordPress without any third-party plugins installed, with the exception of Lightspeed Cache, which Hostinger installs automatically. And since we already pre-installed the Cadence theme, we do have this option here for Cadence AI, which we'll talk about later. Under Dashboard, you have this Updates tab, and this is where you can check for and install updates for the WordPress core, themes, and plugins. Next, we have Posts, Media, and Pages. Posts allows you to create and manage blog posts, and you can also organize them with categories and tags. Functionally, the Posts Editor is the same exact editor you'll use to build your pages. They both use the Blocks Editor, so you can do some really powerful design elements with your blog posts. The main difference between Posts and Pages is how the content is organized. Posts can be organized into categories and displayed in all sorts of different ways on your homepage or other pages. You can also enable a comment section on posts. Pages don't have that same level of organization. There's no categories or way to display a group of pages in a grid like you could with posts. Instead, you could create a menu item for each page, or you could just leave it as a public URL that visitors can access directly. In both posts and pages, you can add image blocks, and this allows you to upload and access media from the media library. You don't need to go to the media library directly to upload images unless you want to, but you can always go to the media library library to see which images have been uploaded to your hosting and delete any unused images to save on resources. Next, let's take a look at the Appearance tab. This is arguably the most powerful tab in the WordPress dashboard. Most of what we'll want to modify here is in the Customize tab. Here we have a full screen view where we can see what our website looks like currently and customize a lot of settings within the theme like colors and fonts header, footer, the page layout, search results, menus, widgets, all sorts of things. WordPress has slowly been consolidating things to this customized screen over the years, so you might see some duplicate options in the customized screen that you can also access via a full screen option on the appearance tab. For example, the menus and widgets options can be accessed here in the customized screen, but I can also exit the customized screen and go under appearance and menus and access the same 
exact options. The only difference is I have more room to work on the menu on this screen and same thing with widgets. I just have more options here, more ways that I can customize it, but I can access most of the same options through the customize screen. Now, we're not gonna go into detail on customizing our site in this episode, but I wanted to clear that up right away to eliminate confusion. Menus and widgets are the same thing in the customize screen and on the appearance tab, it's just different ways of accessing the same information. Under the appearance tab, we have plugins and users. We'll talk more about plugins later. In the users tab, we can manage current users or add a new user. When you go to add a user, you're gonna see this role dropdown, and I'll have a link below that describes each role in depth, but if you want this user to be able to modify your site, you're going to have to give them administrator access. That is the only role that has true full access to everything in the WordPress dashboard. Most of the time, these other roles are not going to be that useful unless you're running a blog with multiple contributors and you wanna have writers that can create posts but can't edit other settings of the site site, but if you have a team and you want to have multiple admins that can all be working on your website, everyone needs to have administrator access. There's not much to cover under tools, so let's just dive into settings next. Here, you can change things like your site's language, time zone, and date format. One thing I want to draw attention to is the permalink structure. Most people want their website to use a URL like yoursite.com slash page name. And for whatever reason, WordPress doesn't do this by default. So to achieve this, you need to go to this permalink screen and edit the permalink structure. So right now it's a custom structure and it's gonna have slash index.php on every single URL. That's not really pretty. I, I don't know why WordPress does this by default, but all we have to do to achieve the nice looking URL structure is click where it says post name, and then it's just gonna be yourdomain.com slash page name. So go ahead and make that change and make sure you save your changes. Those are the basics you need to know about the WordPress dashboard. Understanding the fundamentals will make things much easier as you start to build pages, install plugins, and launch your site. In the next episode, we're going to get started with the cadence theme. We'll build your site's header, footer, and start getting familiar with the blocks editor. Episode 2 is available now for free at Crayler.academy, and it will also be available on the channel on Friday.